чем больше у нас балду не входим, и не входит только шортейшн, а привет к вам. So uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the organizers for, for the opportunity to, uh, for the invitation to come here and to, uh, in particular, to speak uh, in honor of Joseph Bernstein. So I, 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 of course, I uh, heard about Joseph Bernstein a uh, long time ago when I was a graduate, basically when I was a graduate student in Yale. Uh, but at that time, I guess uh, it's, you know, he's like a legendary figure to us. Uh, so uh, about uh, 15 years ago, and, uh, I was organizing uh, our first research program in Singapore, and um, so I finally got to uh, meet him. And uh, when we sat down to sort of arrange uh, Joseph's talk, uh, he, he offered, he graciously offered three talks. Right? I was like, wow. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, so after that, uh, you know, Joseph also became my role model in, in a way. So uh, then, uh, uh, I think it was uh, nine years ago, and Bin Yong Sang and I uh, also had the great fortune of uh, participating in the solution of multiplicity one conjecture for Leo Classical Group, along with uh, Dima and uh, Rami and Dima, uh, which was uh, envisioned by uh, uh, Joseph a long time back. So uh, to put it simply, I was very struck by, the, by Joseph's vision and uh, audacity and after doing the work. So anyway, to, uh, when I received the invitation to come here, of course, I was extremely <coughs> happy, right? And uh, then I, on the way to here, I was uh, thinking a little bit more about this thing about low model, and I realized that uh, you know, if, if your real model is uh, several orders away and uh, you can follow him, but it, really emulating him is, is kind of not so practical and uh, probably low model is not the right word. Uh, probably the real word should be hero or something like hero. And uh, so uh, Joseph, you're very much a hero to us. Okay. So uh, uh, today I, I just want to uh, uh, explain some recent work of uh, myself together with uh, Jia Jun Ma of Shanghai Jiao Tong University and uh, Bing Yong Sung of the Chinese Academy of Science. Uh, Bing Yong is here. So um, uh, about unipotent representation or real classical groups. So let, let me see. Okay, so this is a broad outline of, the, of my talk. I uh, will start with a diagram. I shall call it Vogel's triangle, inverted triangle. And then I'll explain what does the group involve, and um, uh, in particular, some of the invariant that, uh, that, uh, that we would like to see, infinitesimal character on primitive ideals. And then uh, the, the, the talk is really about real groups, uh, because there are a lot of things that are known for a uh, complex group. And I'll explain this notion of unipotent representations. Um, and then I'll do some... Uh, Following Vogel, I'll just uh, 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 review some of the sort of basic CLA for GK module, and uh, and I'll stay in the main result. And uh, so the, the 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 key thing for our work is basically construction of these representations. Representation, it's through an iterative kind of process, and I'll explain the key ingredient of the proof. Okay, so this is, uh, this is what I mean, this uh, Vogel's, this is uh, the first time I'm using the, uh, probably I'm the first person to use this uh, terminology, Vogel's triangle, was uh, taken from Vogel's mini course in Nankai University, which just concluded last week. So uh, this is part of the abstract. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay, so, uh, so these are, let me see, this is it. Okay, I, I probably don't need it, right? So anyway, uh, we have uh, unitary representations, and uh, these are essentially ideas of uh, earlier idea of Krilov, Kostan, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, more recently, and uh, perhaps in the last uh, 15 to 20 years, of uh, your Vogel, right, about Orbi method, Orbi method. So you have uh, six triangles, uh, right? You have three at, uh, uh, the basic items, they are six arrows, right? So uh, from unitary representation to conjugate classes, this is 
this, this error, I, I guess, is not well understood. And uh, from conjugate classes of matrix A to UDT representation, it's uh, well understood for semi-simple uh, uh, orbit. And uh, so uh, um, over here, right? I mean, of course, conjugate classes of Newport matrix is a uh, conjugate class of matrix. It's just inclusion. And the arrow going down is taking the asymptotic cone. So uh, now, uh, so uh, then from unity, uh, in general, for, from group representation to the conjugate classes, uh, Newport orbit, this is Vogel's theory of uh, associate varieties. And, uh, and so this, this arrow from conjugate classes of Newport orbit to unity representation, you can say it's sort of the most difficult uh, uh, aspect of this. And uh, so my uh, today talk is about uh, this process, and uh, we shall call it unipotent representations. Unipotent representations. Okay, so uh, I actually want to have a message so that uh, I can stop any time, right? And uh, okay, so uh, to, uh, the, the one sort of analog for is is some earlier work of Crab Prochese where they try to understand. Uh, the, the, the geometry of uh, orbit closures of Newpotent classes. Okay, so there was an earlier paper, 1982 paper, in which they sort of uh, understand for the geometry of the orbit Newpotent orbit closures, right, uh, for classical group from those of smaller classical group, and through an iterative process starting from the zero orbit. So you build, right, and any new potent orbit closure <laughs> from smaller new potent orbit closure starting from the smallest, zero. Okay, so uh, the message of this talk basically is we should understand, you can understand uh, unipotent representation in a similar way. So uh, the, I think the first one I consider is sort of application of classical invariant theory as exponent by Weyl. And uh, the message for today is in fact, unipotent representation of the classical group should also be understood from those of smaller classical group, again through an iterative process, and now from the characters. Okay, so I, I consider this is really an application of uh, the, uh, Roger's theory and uh, local theta corresponding how. So these are sort of parallel things. Parallel things. I, I, I believe that uh, if, the, if my time is up, with this message, I'll be okay. <laughs> so I, I, I can stop any time, I guess. Okay, so uh, historically, of course, this, uh, the many people have uh, contributed to the problem of uh, this uh, unipotent representations and uh, starting from Arthur's theory of special unipotent representations. And then uh, there was an old paper of Vogel Babish about complex groups. And, uh, and then uh, Vogel had uh, this, uh, you know, uh, theory of uh, uh, social varieties, and uh, Babish has uh, at, uh, at, uh, many uh, writings and articles, including his ICM talk in 1990, and uh, uh, Mogling approach it from the uh, uh, theory of the morphic form, but also she has done the local aspect, and many other people like uh, at, uh, Siddhartha, and uh, Hong Yuhe, and Peter Trapa, Steve Miller, have lots of people have contributed to that topic of unipotent representation. I may have missed some of them. <coughs> okay, so, so I, I, let's, let's just uh, fix our group. Okay, I'll start with the complex groups. Complex group, right? So I fix an, uh, you know, a non-trivial complex, uh, either orthogonal group or symplectic group. You know, when you, I have an orthogonal group, I let epsilon to be equal to one. And uh, when I have a symplectic group, epsilon is equal to minus one. Okay, you have a Lie algebra, and I fix a new potent G orbit, right? <coughs> okay, so uh, as well known, new potent orbit uh, in these classical group are parameterized by Young diagram. Young diagram. Okay. Uh, okay. So, but in my talk, I'm going to just uh, to label everything in terms of column partition rather than the uh, typical low partition. So, we have column partitions, right? And uh, for, 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 for convenience, uh, this is not so important and for, for this lecture, but I mean, I just uh, make sure that um, by allowing the last n column to be equal to zero, I just insist that uh, if I have orthogonal group, the number of the column is odd, and uh, 
If I have sympathetic groups, the number of calling is even, but it's, it's, it, you, you, you wouldn't need to uh, care about this at this point. So, okay, so I consider all the partitions for all the sort of also, but orthogonal partition and sympathetic partitions. You have P of epsilon. <coughs> okay, so uh, now I, it, uh, so the, 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 everything we do is going to have, be, have some iterate kind of process. So I, I, you know, I start with an epsilon partition, and uh, later on I'm going to get another one partition, which is of, uh, for minus epsilon, so I have to just interchange the signs. So I, I define epsilon L, right, starting with the epsilon, and uh, multiply minus one to L, so alternating kind of things. Okay. <laughs> and a new potent orbit that will be concerned for the complex is uh, we have this following restriction, okay? So I look at the number of the columns, right? I insist that, that each, all the columns have the same parity. Parity. And uh, another condition is, so let's, uh, let's start with an orthogonal kind of uh, 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 partition, right? If it's an orthogonal partition, I look at the first column and the second column. I insist going from the first column to the second column, it has to go down. Okay? Right? Okay, so, so, so this is the condition, right? And later on, we are going to have apply the process of cutting the columns. So if you start with, you know, if you will start with uh, the orthogonal kind of partition, you cut the first column, and you are going to get a symplectic uh, partition, and then you cut, continue to cut, you are going to get orthogonal symplectic, orthogonal symplectic, orthogonal symplectic. So this condition really says that whenever I meet an orthogonal partition, I insist that the first column and the second column will have to go down. Okay, so, so this, is, uh, this is the restriction, and this is a pretty large uh, uh, set of important orbit. So in fact, uh, you know, uh, so uh, the all rigid and special important orbit are in this set. So special is in the sense of loose stick, and uh, rigid is in the sense of loose stick spouting star. Okay, so this is a set of important orbit that I will be concerned, complex ones. Okay. Mm. Uh, so I want to uh, tell you a bit about infinitesimal character of primitive ideal. So we have the well-known Heliciano isomorphism for uh, UG upper G, right? It could be uh, it's a symmetric algebra on you know, CM variables uh, invariant under the Weyl group. So M is the range of G. Therefore, you know, at, uh, algebraic characters of this uh, uh, UG upper G, they're called infinitesimal character, can be just a parameterize as a vector in M variable, C of M. <coughs> okay, so, uh, so I'm going to just uh, to fix the notation. I have to uh, uh, just uh, give uh, some uh, convention. Okay, so I define low one over N is equal to N over two minus one, etc. So this is really the low of the orthogonal group. Orthogonal group are in dimension N. Right, and they are defined uh, for a pair of integers with the same parity n one n of two. I define low minus one and one is you know I, I, um, starting from n one over two and all the way to two minus n minus two over two is essentially the the you know juxt uh, juxtaposition of two lows, one starting from symplectic and then orthogonal. You put them together essentially. Okay, so so anyway. And for each nilpotent orbit that I fix in my list, that we are going to define an, an element, let's call it lambda low, and this is the infinitesimal character that I want to have, right? If you have an orthogonal one, then you know, it, it starts with the orthogonal low and uh, pair with, with the symplectic orthogonal, etc. cetera. Right? If you have a symplectic, and you just start with symplectic orthogonal, symplectic orthogonal. So this is the infinitesimal character that I'm going to attach for this particular nilpotent orbit with these columns. It's pretty simple. Essentially, you look at the columns, and you look at lows, and put them together. Right. So this infinitesimal character is, is exactly the infinitesimal character that's pres prescribed by Arthur for what, it, what is called a special uh, integral special nilpotent representations in terms of sort of, you know, uh, you have a dual orbit in the dual uh, uh, Langlands two and look at the SL two triple etc. So this is the right kind of infinitesimal character. For. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, the special, you know, to sort of why this uh, to, it, uh, 
infinitesimal character in, in, is kind of special in terms of representation theory is the following proposition, essentially due to Babish and Volker. And, uh, okay, so uh, now for, let's fix a Newton object in our class. Class, right? And then there exists a unique primitive ideal, I of O, such that the infinitesimal character of this primitive ideal is given our given one, and the associated variety of this primitive ideal is in contained in the closure of this new potent orbit. Right. Okay. Now, uh, the second is sort of more uh, at, uh, at, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's critical, right? You take any primitive ideal, right? Suppose the infinitesimal character is you know, at, uh, in the beginning, I have uh, fixed a certain parity because the, I have a column, etc. I insist that they have the same parity, so I have a parity, right? Now, if the parity is even, and I assume that the infinitesimal character is integers, right? If the parity is odd, the infinitesimal character is half integers, integer, right? And suppose the social variety of this primitive ideal is contains this, right? Then its infinitesimal character got to be bigger than equal to lambda O. So, right. so this, this, this infinitesimal character is really special, right? Among all primitive ideals with, you know, where the, the, the social varieties contain this, this is really the minimal one, minimum one, right? So, uh, so uh, you know, and the equality holds if and only if this ideal is equal to the ideal that, uh, this, that I, uh, this, so this is, this is um, in fact, this is the maximal ideal, et cetera. Okay. So, so it's kind of explained that uh, why this uh, uh, is kind of special. Yeah. Okay. So uh, for, the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the integral case, it's, it's, this result is due to uh, uh, Babish Vogel. And uh, the rest of the cases, we prove it through local theta correspondence. Okay. Okay. So now, so now let, let me just go to real groups. And, uh, so suppose G is a real form of that. And uh, now I, let, I just uh, we introduce some sort of notion of epsilon epsilon prime space in order to sort of do things simultaneously. And uh, okay. So it's just an epsilon symmetric bilinear space over C, right? And together with the Cartan involution, Cartan involution. So this is, uh, this is just uh, L squared is equal to 1, and, uh, and L u, L v is equal to some epsilon prime, u of v. So epsilon, epsilon prime, both could be equal to plus 1 and minus 1. So, all right. And then, uh, after you fix the Cartan involution, you can fix a compatible real or quaternionic kind of structure, right? And which is unique up to conjugation by k. So uh, our group here, it will be the centralizer of this particular structure. So altogether, there are four cases, depending on the choice of epsilon, epsilon prime. So let me just give you a table, right? So uh, if epsilon is equal to one, epsilon prime is equal to one, is this a real orthogonal group, and both of them, negative one, it's a real symplectic group, and uh, you know, if epsilon, epsilon prime are opposite sign, then you get a quaternionic group, okay? So, so this is all together, there are four groups. <coughs> all right, for the other group. Okay, so uh, whenever I get the real symplectic group and uh, you know, this real form, I'm going to take the metaplectic cover, right? But otherwise, I'll just keep it, I'm happy with it. It's a bit, right? So uh, here is a definition of uh, you know, um, uh, O unipotent. So I, I just take uh, an unipotent orbit in our class, in our list. Right, an irreducible Kasterman Wallach representation of this G tutor. So possibly I take a double covering. Right. It's said to be O unipotent. The first condition is the annihilator of this has to contain this, right, this, uh, this uh, unique primitive ideal that I attach. Right. And uh, secondly, I insist that if the group is a real sympathetic group, right, so I can have a parities, you know, parities according to uh, the, the column parity, right? If the parity is odd parity, and I insist this is going to be a uh, uh, metaparity representation, right? But otherwise, the parity even it descends to the to the, to the group. So this is 
Okay, so this is now of course this definition is uh, in the, you know in the, uh, you know we we add a definition essentially including the metaplastic group, right? But this is the the usual definition that has been uh, around for quite some time, right? So uh, I guess the real the main uh, problem, right? It would be to understand these representations, okay? This representation. So this is the definition of O unipotent, right? When O is in a class complex orbit. Okay, so let, let, let we uh, denote the set of isomorphic classes of O unipotent irreducible cosmo representation by this symbol. Yeah. It's a maximum. Yeah, it's a maximum. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 so this is really, I mean, in this case, but, right, it's really equality. But, yeah. you know, I, yeah, okay. Because it's, it's a maximal, you know, I, this is a remark that it really said uh, two conditions, right? That social variety of the annihilator is really equal to uh, O bar. And in fact, uh, that you have the right infinitesimal character. So essentially two conditions, right? Uh, but as a general definition, we insist it's bigger than this. Because, uh, you know, at, uh, in some cases, you may, not have maximum idea. Right. <coughs> okay. <coughs> okay. So uh, we also define the gradient degree of the category of such representations, where the the social variety of the annihilator, the complex of social variety, is contained in the in the closure of uh, a certain important orbit. And let's we we just say that uh, such a representation is called O bounded. O bounded. Right. So. Okay, so uh, now I will just to explain some of the basic uh, 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 notions in the uh, GK side uh, for, for GK module, the average structure. So uh, now I remember that I have a complex orbit, so I, uh, I take the complex orbit intersect with this P and uh, you get a K orbit, right? You take a K orbit and you denote K O O K the gross entity with our category of K tilde equivalent algebra vector bundles. Okay, and then you, uh, you know, for each complex orbit, you take the possible or kind of real orbit, uh, K orbit inside P, and you put them together. Let's call the K O of K tilde. And uh, Vogel defined uh, a canonical at, uh, at homomorphism, which we call, that is called the associated character. Starting with right and uh, you know an admissible representation which are O bounded, O bounded, and then he attaches all right an element in K O K tilde which is called associate character, associate character. So this is uh, sort of this is part of the theory of uh, you know a social variety etc. Right. So this is this is the invariant that you attach. Okay, and uh, I also uh, need to uh, define a notion so-called uh, unmissable orbit, uh, K orbit data. Right? So this is sort of K uh, side of the, the original uh, notion of admissibility was defined by Toffro in the real group case. Right? So this is sort of a translation, but it's up to Vogel. Right? So you take this, uh, you know, a K orbit in P, right? and uh, then you define this one-dimensional K X module, where this uh, K of X is really a stabilizer group. Right? So, uh, you know, it takes the derivative and uh, an irreducible representation of the, 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 the stabilizer group K of X is called admissible. First of all, its differential has to be the prescribed one. Secondly, I insist if the real P G is a, a real synthetic group, again, you know, it, I want this to be compatible with the parity that I fixed. Okay. Now, uh, if uh, such a uh, you know irreducible representation exists, then we say this is an invisible orbit, and the collection of the pair, this you have a KC orbit low, is called a new potent admissible K orbit data. Okay. So it turns out in the case that we will be concerned that all uh, new potent admissible K orbit data are all line bundles, line bundles, right? So this is the notion. And uh, I think I'm, uh, okay, so uh, 
So uh, you put uh, the, the again, right? So if you fix in a complex orbit, then you look at uh, the, the k orbit inside p, and then you put uh, all the admissible orbit data together, right? So this is notion. And with that, uh, and I think I'm ready to stay sort of our main result for this talk. Right. Okay. So I fixed a complex Newton orbit, right, in our class. In other words, you know, right, I, I want to have all the columns have the same parity, etc. right? <laughs> and whenever I meet uh, orthogonal uh, partitions, I insist that you count down a bit. OK? The so theorem one is for every admissible k orbit data, right, there exists a unitarizable O unipotent representation of the tutor such that the associated character is given by your prescribed admissible data. Okay. The second is, uh, is, is conditional. Assuming certain result the Babish about the counting of unipotent representation was uh, for the case of real sympathetic group, it was uh, it was uh, it was uh, at, uh, at announced in the ICM note of the Babish. Right? But we also uh, need to have the counting result, not only for the real sympathetic group, but also we need the counting result for split of all orthogonal group. Okay? Now, if you assume that uh, these are counting result, then in fact, this, uh, you know, the associated character map restricts to a bijection between the set of unipotent representations, all unipotent representation of G tutor, and the set of possible admissible orbit, okay? And uh, so, so, so this is a sort of an exhaustion kind of result, right? And uh, it would heavily depend on this sort of uh, counting result of Abish. And uh, again, and uh, this is exhaustion result, it in particular implies that uh, every representation, the all unipotent representation is unitary, unitary. Now, these results have been long expected long expected, and uh, for the rest of the time, I want to sort of explain how these things are done, and especially the, the, the most important one is the construction of these representations. Right, representation. Okay, so uh, as I, I put in the, uh, the message in the original method, is through an iterate kind of process, right? So uh, in this case, will be iterated integration, integration. <laughs> So in the geometry side, uh, in, as I mentioned in the beginning, Newton orbit closure were taken sort of uh, by sort of you know some kind of double fibration, take a geometric quotient, etc. Right uh, through classical invariant theory. But now we are going to do this construction through integrate integration, sort of against the oscillator representation, and, uh, against the oscillator representation. So so now let's starting with the initial data. I have. Uh, you know, I have a sort of a, a real uh, group, uh, which is given by the, the epsilon epsilon prime. So uh, altogether, there are four cases, right? And I take, uh, uh, you know, this is a sort of initial thing, right? You take a complex orbit of zero, and then you take a k orbit inside the p, right? And starting from this data, and uh, we are going to define a sequence of data, right? And so you, know, you already have V0, O0, V0, O0, and V1, O1 will be what we call the descent of this. <coughs> All right. So, uh, it's, uh, okay, so uh, you keep, you know, this descending kind of process. Okay. The next one is always the descent of the principal one until you can't do any more. Okay. That's right. Now, in terms of the Newton orbit, essentially what's happening is this: you take a V of one to be the image of the Newton orbit, and this uh, uh, that uh, the uh, you know the Newton orbit is just taking the first column away, taking the first column away. So starting from the initial data, you have a sequence of data, right? And until you can't do any further, and uh, the notation is O of O i plus one is the descent of the previous one. So I, you know this this notation is. Meaning it's going down, going down. Okay, so uh, now uh, 
uh, this, each of the same process that you start with, you know, and uh, epsilon, epsilon plan kind of space. After you do the descent, what you get is sort of an opposite space. So starting from Z, V0, which is epsilon, epsilon plan space, and then V1 will be minus epsilon, minus epsilon plan space. And they form a reductive dual pair. Okay, the, 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 the corresponding asymmetric group will be a reductive dual pair. So I take, right, for each of the one, I take the oscillator representation, the very representation. So I take omega of V0, V1, you know, tensor product of V1, V2, etc. So this is the larger representation that, uh, that I have. It's a tensor product of, of uh, the oscillator representations. And I also need to put uh, additional, some, uh, you know, for each of the group inside this, I put the finite uh, or the character, right? So, of course, when you have sympathetic group, you don't have any character, it's trivial character, but you have orthogonal group, you may have determining character. At, uh, if the orthogonal group is not compared, then you can have four characters. So I have to take care of these four characters. It turned out to be important that you have to put these in. Uh, and what I do is, I do, right? So I'm you know, I take this uh, tensor product oscillator representation as also a uh, tensor with this character. This is a, a minor point, the character. And then basically, I just integrate, right? So all together, I'm going to have many classical group, right? The, one, the first one is GV0. It's the group that I'm concerned. Then I have GV1, GV2, etc. right? And I just integrate against all the rest of the group. GV1, GV2, etc. Now I'll take the matrix coefficient, you integrate. Now, of course, you really, first of all, you have to ensure everything is absolute convergent, which it is. And uh, from this integration, it defines a non, you know, continuous uh, bilinear map. And then you just take the kernel of this bilinear map and mod it out. And uh, this is the representation that we want to have. So it's a very simple process. It is also just uh, similar uh, to, to the understanding of Newport orbit closures. You take geometric quotient over here, we just take, right, and integrate for these groups. Okay. So, uh, so, so of course, the big question is, you know, what kind of representation you get? Uh, first of all, is it non-zero or not, right? And what kind of invariant can, can you actually uh, uh, do? Okay, so, so this is the construction. Okay, now let's just uh, dissect this first constraint a little bit. Let's just do at, uh, so the iterate ones, right? So these are the intermediate step, right? So intermediate step is starting from, you know, I2 all the way to the, to the, to the, to, to XI, right? And you can define the, the a representation for sort of in each of the intermediate steps. Pi of this, right? And, uh, so for, to start from uh, the i step, to, uh, actually to i plus one step to i, it is in the converging range, meaning that it's integral absolute converging, right? And uh, this, so the representation, right, for this i stage is exactly, is this character tensor with, when I have this theta uh, uh, bar, v of i this. And that really mean that I integrate against this particular oscillator representative that I have. Right, so this is, I, I put everything sort of in a smaller step, the easier step, I, I will need to control the each iteration step. To understand, right? Okay, so this is an uh, intermediate step. <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so I mean, uh, the original, I have the group, I have the important orbit, right? I cut it, I got the smaller group, smaller group here until I get, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So it will be zero orbit until, right? The representation is, yeah, 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 so backward. Yeah. Backwards. Okay, so, uh, so, okay, so we have the representation, right? So first of all, uh, now uh, we need to show a number of things, right? We need to show it's, uh, uh, it's, um, you know, it's uh, it, 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 it's uh, supported on this new potent orbit, and uh, and also have the infinitesimal character, and have the right unmissable data, etc., unitary, etc. 
right? You need to write a chapter. So I just, uh, I'm going to go going through uh, the, for so parts of this assertion. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to divide sort of things which are a little bit easier, okay? The easier part is, the first of all, the infinitesimal character. Okay, remember that uh, in our definition of Right, all unipotent representation. One is about, uh, you know, uh, it's about uh, this uh, the, the, um, a social variety of the annihilator to compress our social variety. The other is the infinitesimal character. So let's first fix the, uh, the infinitesimal character. And you take all i to the, you know, the complex orbit. And the algebra of the, you know, ug of g is this, uh, x on this representation through the character that I attach. Lambda. So this is actually uh, quite easy to do because in the theory of local theta correspondence, the, infin uh, the corresponding infinitesimal character is sort of known. <laughs> but in each of stage, if you know the infinitesimal character, you just have to just match, match. So right. So the, so in other words, Arthur's prediction is sort of works very very well with respect to local theta correspondence. Let's say, right. So this is uh, quite uh, easy. The second part. It turned out that unitarity is also relatively easy, okay? So the basic ideas uh, start from uh, the work of Zheng Shuli in the 1980s, and uh, then He Yuhong and follow up with uh, some sort of, uh, a lot of refinement. So basic idea is you need to be able to estimate the matrix coefficient, okay? Using basically explicit realization of all the representations, right? Uh, it uh, turned out that you, you don't have, have, have to have very precise kind of estimate. Pretty good estimate will work in, in, in the case we are concerned. So unitarity for these representation <laughs> can be done relatively smoothly. Okay, so these are work of Lee and uh, her and, um, and also and some idea of um, uh, Harris, Lee and Sang showing the negativity of certain matrix So I, I first uh, put aside the two issues. Infinitesimal character can be settled. Uh, unitarity, uh, okay, right? Infinity, okay. So, uh, so, yeah. So the harder part is, the first of all, I'm right, okay, it's non-vanishing, right? Non-vanishing, right? Secondly is the control of social varieties. And more important is the control of a social character. Like a social character. How do you sort of understand uh, this representation, right? What kind of, uh, so, okay, so I, uh, uh, the, the broad idea is extremely simple. Actually, there are two aspects. One is through geometry, and we provide it by the moment maps. And uh, what we see, we'll see is this geometry moment map, in fact, is going to provide us with some kind of upper bound. Upper bound. Uh, huh? Can you explain it? Yeah, 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 some kind of upper bound. And analysis is, uh, is about the structure of the general principle series. The general principle series. And in a way, it's going to provide us with a lower bound. And uh, geometry analysis, somehow they have to sit together in within the general principle series, and then equality is forced. Okay, so, yeah. Huh? Yeah, in, in the case that we consider they're all irreducible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so, so this is the, so we, we would like to have an upper bound and a lower bound, and uh, somehow we have a mechanism to force that upper bound and lower bound sort of got to be the same, and uh, then everything's done. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, the, the moment map. Moment map, right? So I'm, I'm looking at the complex setting, right, where you have one space, another, which are opposite to each other, right, in terms of form, and then you take a home here, and then you can define what is called moment map, right? So from G to G prime, and uh, the moment map, the difference is, you know, over here, phi of T is just T star of T, the other is T, T of star. So this moment map, the relationship between moment map is really a relationship between two matrix, the AB and BA. Right, AB and BA. Right. Okay, so, so anyway, uh, you could, uh, there, are, there are also analogs in the sort of symmetric space setting and also real group setting, right? Both moment map, 
right? For the complex thing here, things are a little bit easier, right? The geometry are clearer, but for, for symmetric space and real group, it's, uh, it's a little bit more sophisticated. But anyway, we have a sort of right picture. This is sort of the geometry behind the local theta correspondence. Okay, so uh, so at, uh, in order for, for us to get this, uh, the upper bound, and uh, let's uh, define something called, let's call it working in the algebra setting. Uh, let's call the algebra set uh, lifting, right? And I put the, uh, a, a, a twist because, uh, you know, in, in, in theta lifting, in Rogers, uh, it's, it's, you know, you take it as, you try to realize as a quotient of this, but over here, I'm just going to lose it as a tensor product rather as the home thing here, right? So I put a twist. I start with G prime, so this is the general setting. If you have a reductive dual pair, right, you take a pi prime to be G prime, K prime module of final lens. Final lens. And then you define theta tilde or the algebraic theta lifting. You just take the algebraic version of oscillator representation. So this is GK module for the oscillator representation, tensor with this uh, pi prime, and then you take the space of co invariant. Right. So what you get is a GK module of final lens. And uh, so in this generality, you can easily prove, or I, I shouldn't say easily, it's a, you can prove, right? It's a, uh, because I claim this is a relative harder part, so I so, so cannot say that. Right? The upper bound are social variety, and this is uh, some work of Locke and Ma. And uh, then the social variety of this, this algebraic tech lifting. Right? And uh, so it's almost what uh, many people call full theta lift. Full theta lift. Right? And the social variety is controlled by this double uh, vibration map. Vibration map right? So if you have a representation which is sort of bounded in some way, and uh, the, the full theta lifting will have some bound. That's the first point. And, uh, and similarly, uh, there's an upper bound for associate characters. Associate characters. So there are two aspects, right? So, uh, you know, in our situ situation, what you have is, you know, we have a new proton orbit, it's the descent, right? So uh, this is a complex orbit, and you have to look at uh, K orbit in P, right? Suppose you have a pair of what we call the relevant new proton orbit. So like, it really means that. Uh, O is contained in P, O prime is contained in P prime, and then you have a descent thing here. Right? And then, in fact, then you can uh, define a, a map between these K groups, right? a geometry defined. Okay, geometry defined. And, and then you sort of you put things together between all these relevant pairs, right? So you de define a map, sort of geometric uh, uh, kind of map, right? Set out the check. And one can show that a social character of this algebraic theta lifting is at most theta check of this. So for any O prime bounded final representation. So the message is, right, in the theory of local theta correspondence, if you take the max of full, even the full theta lift, and you can have very good uh, geometric bound. Through the okay. Um, okay. So uh, now, so remember that uh, you know we have a new photon orbit and go to smaller, and eventually you get zero orbit. So uh, now I'm uh, sort of going back, right? Going back. I start from the last one. This is essentially a character, right? And then, and uh, what I do is using this geometric kind of process, I define all these admissible orbits. So this process happened to, uh, we have very, very good control in terms of moment map. So over here you have an orbit, you have another orbit, this is a descent, and what is really important is the element that sort of intervene between these two orbits. And there's an orbit, you know, this is the element inside the home space. From this home space, you could do everything. Right, so, so you know, you have two sort of a related new photon orbit, and then you have the upstairs, there's something, right? And it goes this and this, and uh, this is the element that you have to pay attention. Everything can be defined in terms of this particular element. Right? Okay, so uh, it, 
you could obtain from admissible uh, data to this way through this process. The process. Right, so this is the admissible ospable data. So this is, you know, for in each of the intermediate sphere, right, from uh, admissible, right, orbit data, we go to the obvious admissible orbit on the next one through this geometry defined, everything in terms of moment map. Right. Okay, so uh, this is the admissible orbit data, and uh, one of the key points is all admissible data on this OR are obtained this way. Okay, so, so, so everything could be seen from this double vibration map in, in the case we are concerned. So this is sort of take care of, uh, so, um, you know, control of uh, social varieties and also the control of admissible data, admissible data. But that's, I, at this point, I haven't even proved that the thing that we constructed is equal to zero or not, right? So we need to have a lower bound for each of the process, each of the process, okay? So now this is where the theory of degenerate principle series come in. And I'm happy to say that Steve uh, Kudala is here because uh, you know, when I was a uh, postdoc in University of Maryland in 1990, and his office is next door to each other, all right, and uh, Steve who explained this, you know, this uh, structure of the general principles here to me. So I learned a lot from, from that, and uh, I've been happy to use this uh, in many situations. Okay, so we need to show, you know, for each of iterative press to, to have sort of low bound. And this upper bound is actually achieved, in other words. In particular, show everything is non-zero, everything, right? Okay, so uh, here we uh, learned this uh, very uh, nice idea of Ho Yu Hong, right? So his idea is this, right? Is I want to show something is not equal to zero, right? And he decided to do another one, if, right? So you know, he said, how about let's do another integration? Now, of course, you could do that. You can do another integration, right? And provided that uh, after you do some additional one, you are able to control it. Am I right? Uh, so, so this is indeed what happens. So what you do is, you know, right? Okay, so, so I have, uh, sort of I have uh, smaller now because I'm, I'm con constructing sort of from smaller groups here to slightly larger group. I'm not very sure what I get is sort of zero or has the right geometry invariant, right? So what you do is, I uh, start from here, some, some bigger, I live to some much larger group, okay? So for example, I mean, it could be like uh, from, uh, I don't know, it's a sympathetic group, some orthogonal group, I have to do, do some sympathetic group, right? And, but I control in a way that when I lift over here, right? Okay, so when I, so this is the process where I have, I have, I have to go there, right? But how do I choose it? I choose in the following way. And from here to here, there's something called Rayleigh's quotient. So this is the maximum quotient where this group is acting trivially. So this is a special case of how quotient, it's a Rayleigh's quotient. It turned out the Rayleigh's quotient is always a member, is always sits inside certain degenerate principle series. So I control in a way such that the Rayleigh's quotient, right? The degenerate principle series, it's definitely going to sit inside. Control the size such as the corresponding degenerate principle city is at a unitary axis. Okay, unitary axis. So, right, so I do this and I, I just live over there, right? And I control the side, I control the group over here so that the corresponding rarest uh, 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 quotient is inside the unitary uh, degenerate principle series. Now, it turned out for real group, for, for, uh, for orthogonal group sympathetic, you can do that, right? But for quaternion group, you can't do that. You just can't get close to the unitary axis. But you can close, you can get it as close as you can. So basically, it's certain determined half character. <laughs> okay. So you try to go to this this particular sort of you know larger group where the Rayleigh's quotient is like a unitary representation. Everything is very very nice. Okay. So this is how you do this. Uh, this, uh, you pr apply, apply another integration to some larger space, and then, right, so anyway, you, ha you have here, you have uh, some larger space, you get something much larger, right, and you get a Rayleigh's quotient, and then you over here, this space, another space, you take the orthogonal complement. You just live to this particular orthogonal complement. Okay, so uh, 
Now, uh, I want to say that this is, you know, uh, many people have heard about doubling method. Uh, doubling method. And this is kind of over doubling method is because what happens is this, when I live from here to this bigger group here, the size of the bigger group essentially is two times of the, like this one. So therefore, this, this, this size is really a lot bigger than, than the original group that you start out with. You know, in the doubling method, you just double the variable. Okay, so this is some kind of over doubling kind of method. Over kind of right? So the so the real thing is after I do, you know, I, I, I perform integration, right? I choose my this and this another integration to the right space. And when you do this two times, it's close to a unitary degenerate principle series of the group that I left to. Oh, uh, okay, so, so what happens is uh, for quaternion case, right? And one of the degenerate principles, although it's not uh, the unitary exit, but it's still sort of unitary and irreducible. Okay, and so in some other cases, is sort of you know it has a uh, circle theory. It is two sort of two layers. Everything is unitary, but it's not. You know, if you have a unitary axis, everything is the direct sign, right? But uh, in, in one of the cases, is sort of two layer of representation. Every representation is unitary. Because it's endpoint of complementary uh, I, I, I'm, I, OK, I, I'm not very sure about complementary series, right? But it's, it's almost like a unitary degenerate principle series. OK, now, OK, so this, when I arrive at this unitary degenerate principle and everything about, uh, you know, a social cycle, actually everything you can compute, right? So anyway, what happens is, uh, so basically, it's right, okay, so I want to control this, the one of the iteration process. I do another one, and after do two times, I have very good control. I know that everything over here, right, but in each of the steps, I know I have upper bound, upper bound. So after two sets, of course, I'm going to have upper bound, right? But I claim that this upper bound, because it's within the degenerate principle series, is exactly what you should expect. Everything you can't decrease at all, right? You got to have each of the process here, you got to have everything you want. Okay. <coughs> so uh, this is how this uh, uh, law of degenerate principle series comes in. In order to, for us to, to control the size of the representation. In other words, it's really nothing smaller. If it's something smaller, you are going to have problem after doing this double kind of integration. And uh, this is how we achieve everything. So with that, I think uh, I'm coming to the end of my talk.